if certain legislation may change the way you vote for the Charleston County School Board in the future. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with current Charleston County School Board member Kevin Hollinshed for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Kevin Hollinshed, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Hey Quentin, how you doing my friend? Doing great actually. Good. Uh, the question is, how are you doing? Because there's a lot of news going on from down the street here at 75 Calhoun. Uh, yeah, Quentin. Um, you know, um, evidently we may be going through some drastic changes. Uh, the general public um, has made an outcry to the legislators. I think a lot of people have forgotten their civics law and that the uh, legislators, which are the, the guys who uh, created the school district and actually created the board. So, um, you know, uh, people in Charleston County began to understand uh, they had to get to their legislature because the board was receiving numerous of emails, numerous of protests to the meeting, and they just decided to ignore it. So, again, um, that's what happens in democracy. You talk about obviously the general public. I got to take you to the Post and Courier because the editorial staff at the Post and Courier wrote this particular, uh, I believe, editorial just yesterday. It reads this editorial. No, we do not need a less diverse, more divisive Charleston County School Board. They said this quote: If you like the Charleston County, if you like Charleston County Council, you're going to love Charleston Legislators' plan to replace the Charleston County School Board. H five zero three four would require all nine members of the Charleston County School Board to run a new elections this fall. This fall, you're up for re-election. What is going to your mind right now, Mr. Hollinshed? Well, I plan for to run for re-election anyway countywide, but this restriction into the area which I, I live in, my county council district. So as I told uh, the various news media, um, I am comfortable with that. That is my home area, born and raised. Uh, from Union Heights on down, everybody knows Kevin Hollinshed and his family and, and what my father and uh, sister and mother have provided for that district. And the Post and Corey goes on to write this. This will let voters who are unhappy with the board efforts to provide better educational opportunities for poor kids try to replace the entire board in November rather than just replacing half of the board members as they could try to do under current law. But it hardly seems fair to voters who doubt they were electing board members for two four terms, a uh, four-year terms that is in 2018, and that's what the Post and Courier is saying. What efforts are you putting forth to try to have better opportunities, educational opportunities for kids here in, in the district? Well, you know, in, in the area where I live and represent, right, it's the highest plotted area in Charleston County. Uh, North Charleston uh, has about 52 percent African Americans uh, within my district, uh, within Char North Charleston area and the disparity is great. So I will be charged with the task of making sure that they get the quality education, like if, for example, in Atlanta, Georgia, right. that they take in private areas and start yielding very successful young African Americans. Charleston County for some years now have not been doing that. We've been taking care of some African American needs, but not in the greater number of needs. What are those greater number of needs right now, Mr. Hollinshed? The greater number of needs are, um, Charleston County is 52,000 52, students. Um, it is about a um, um, 17,000 African Americans, and the majority of them are in the poverty and despair. So, if for me, again, that would allow me to uh, focus attention on that, and plus the whole district as a whole, um, to bring about education for those people that are in quiet or in struggling areas. What are those other struggling areas in your mind? Hollywood, uh, uh, St. James Santee, out in the Orndahl, McClendonville area. Uh, we have them in pockets throughout the county. Um, as you know, um, you heard people fussing about West Ashley Middle School. Um, what a lot of people don't know, and, and, I, and I have kept my mouth closed, um, that is the number one middle school in Charleston County with uh, discipline problems. So we need to find good mentors and good programs to go into that school uh, to get with those children to put them on the right path. Um, we don't need media hype behind that. 
We don't need the Facebook time, all that. We need to get in there and put our roll up our arms and put mentorship programs and, and adequate educational programs to bring those children around. How do you define those adequate educational programs for West Ashley Middle? Well, from what I understand, that they don't have the college prep classes there and the numbers uh, like like C.E. Williams. Right. Uh, so we need to ask the question the other day uh, at board meeting, uh, why hasn't it been done? No one could not answer, not even the superintendent. You go back to the video. Uh, we talked about it afterwards, and she explained it to me, and I'm not going to divulge that, but, you know, I think we could have done a lot better. What is your definition of better when you look at C.E. Williams, West Ashley Middle, all these other schools in West Ashley? Well, you can't put um, pockets of people that are struggling together and not put the resources like mentoring, uh, basic foundation in place. Kids are coming from struggling homes. It's not Quentin. Just as say, I want to take these kids and move them and put them in one particular area. Uh, it's more to it than that. I had staff uh, call me privately, and they were fussing about the decision that the board made the other day to put kids in the trailer on one campus. And they said six months is not, a, not an adequate time to prepare to change young people's lives. We got people camel jockeying, talking about education, that had aimed first, barely got out of freaking high school. Barely got out of high school. And they're, they're camel jockeying in education. So I kind of ignore those people now. And I kind of listen to the ones that have been doing it for a living, the ones who are retired from the district, the ones who are, have the expertise in it, the ones that have created new ideals like the Carroll Temple, George Temple, people like that. Um, I listen to the Allison Mackeys, the people that really have get it, you know, they roll up the sleeves and work in the, in the community. Uh, Eric Jackson, you name it, uh, there's people that actually, you know, have hands on in our community and know what's going on. What else is going on in the Charleston County School District that should be brought to the attention of the board and Superintendent Postaway? I don't know, man. I just saw a Facebook post and about 173,000 uh, contracted out to someone from Horry County. Uh, I'm got to figure out what in the world is that about. We have the spending habit of paying for our friends and not solving the problems and issues of the district. So I, I don't know, man. I got to do more research on that. With this allegation, uh, how much would that be altogether for a whole school year? Man, I probably could fund about three or four teacher positions. I honestly, Quentin, I think, let me tell you something. Um, I hope that things do change in the fall, that we can bring about some audit and restructuring of the district that we can get down to bringing the plotted areas up. As you saw on the news, everybody complained about their post, their seat. No one's talked about the disparity of the children and what's best for the children. We need to focus on what's best for the children and not worry about my seat. What's best for the Charleston County School District students in 2020? Uh, more attention, showing them that we love them, showing that we pull together as a family. Um, you know, we we have endured for a night and joy comes in the morning. In other words, that cloud may hang over us for the last 15 years. One of the good things I can say about Dr. Postal is, is the, the upset and the uproar that she caused by her and Todd Garrett has made even people in my community start paying attention and not just listening to folks with rhetoric. So through that rough turbulence, new growth is going to come. Where do you start? Well, we start with the election this fall. And then and then the remaining time of the board members to understand they said they quit. They took their marbles and ran. Um, we're going to try to get some things out of the way and maybe have some good dialogue uh, up to the budget time that maybe kind of move the pendulum forward. I was in Ackerby the other day at uh, Mary Ford, right. and I had some parents behind me that never got the um, chance to voice their opinion on what happened to their school. What happened to their school? Well, in your they, mind. The the board members from Mount Pleasant, uh, Todd Garrett downtown, the West Ashley, uh, all teamed up together and decided they want to shut down Mary Ford. The only two board members who were against that was Chris Collins and myself. 
they have no public meeting with those people in the community. They just say, again, slave master mentality. You know, you do as I say. You know, I know what's best for y'all Negroes on the plantation. So y'all come along, just get along. And those people, man, were upset. So, so again, you know, we got to start respecting everybody in their income level. You talk about that, obviously, that income level. What was the income level prior to the school being closed? The income level of people that are working two jobs and struggling. The income level of single parent families. The income level is people who need a hand up. And, they, you know, people make choices in life. Unfortunately, there are people who make the choices in life, um, you know, may not be the best choices at that particular time. But you know what? That's just how God worked it out. We are here as stewards in Christ to make sure that we help them through those rough times. So, again, as, as disparity goes in Atlanta, Georgia, the people in Georgia are beginning to come around to make sure everybody has a place at the table. They're yielding kids out of impoverished areas, and they're make, letting them go to Harvard and Yale. Okay. You know, on ABC News, if you saw right. the girls' side of that particular school right. are graduating at 100%. The boys' side at 87%. It takes, as you saw, and I tell you what, the, the state legislators had the superintendent from Mississippi in, and she spoke on their hearings, and she said, this ain't no joke. This is hard work. I've been saying that for the last three years since I've been there. Everybody's sitting there talking, but I have not seen anything turn around that puts that in place. What initiatives could have been turned around or used to turn around Mary Ford versus just closing it down, in your mind? Well, for example, um, uh, Charleston Development Academy, right. CDA, has been in our system for over 20 years. It's a charter school, but it's an African American started charter okay. school. Uh, Cecilia Roger Cunningham started it. Okay. And she uh, yielded some great achievements in elementary kids. And she she had, we had promised them for decades to give them a new school. I said give that school a chance at Mary Ford. You know, we can still do the early, early childhood program in that, in that facility, in that school, but give her a chance to carry her kids there and work with the kids at Mary Ford since the parents want to stay there. And, and we work together in that harmony fashion. If you were to theoretically bring that to Mary Ford, you know, looking hindsight, how much would that save the school district in your mind? Well, you know, she says um, it will save money shutting schools down, but her spending habit is atrocious. So again, you just talked about $173,000. So we can't call the pot, the, the, the pot, the kettle black, and we don't look in our own self. So again, um, you know, we can't call the pot black. How do you audit the Charleston County School District? Well, you bring in independent people. You have to have a board. And I, I tell you, this is not a personal thing. This is just business. You know, when you're charged with the responsibility as a taxpayer uh, advocate, you have to make sure that you do things fair. You're not sitting there being buddies with the superintendent. I had a phone conversation Friday with Chairman Escobar of Atlanta, Georgia, and they told me, they said, man, Mr. Hollishead, I don't know what y'all got going on there, but we're not getting in your business. But, you know, understand superintendents usually last five to six years. And we're the part of ways that our superintendent is peaceful. And she had brought us out of the darkness into light. Now we got to get another superintendent to carry the next step forward. Here in Charleston, we're trying to ride. We're trying to ride the donkey down the street for twenty years. The, I think the most longest superintendent we ever had was um, the last superintendent, and and um, she was here what seven years. Right, Doctor McGinley. Doctor McGinley. She was here seven years. So, you know, I think we need new growth. We need new growth, and we need uh, new direction. Not new direction, but we need someone to bring in. That, that that focus to get everybody motivated to show leadership with the teachers and move them forward. Our teachers are in distraught and despair right now. Our morality in our whole Charleston County School District is low with teachers. Now, I don't care how much you pay them, you know, they're miserable. Let me get back to, obviously, the audit. How fair and balanced will that investigation be in your mind? Well, again, 
you got to find out what you're trying to yield or what you're trying to find find out. So again, we have to study other districts and other district tendencies that are similar and like ours. I think there's only two in the state. As that's Greenville and Spartanburg. Okay. And we have to examine them and see where they're at and see what they're doing. And then we need to compare things here in Charleston County and see where we're at. And then look at some neighboring counties like Charlotte, North Carolina, okay. that may have the same population, the makeup, and look at what they're doing. And then compare it to apples to oranges. Let me get back to the Pulse and Courier editor, editorial, that is. They said this quote, based on what we've seen in thousands of communities across the nation, including our own, Switching to single-member districts would create, would create, that is, a more divisive school board where members find it nearly impossible to focus on the needs of the overall community because they're fixated on the hyper-local concerns of small groups within their small districts. What are those small groups, Mr. Hollingshead? I have no idea what they're saying. I mean, you got people, and I understand they're big advocates. I'm not getting in a fight with them. I mean, they got more paper than you have ink. On your video, and um, they're fans of the superintendent and of the dark money that actually um, uh, plagued our district right now. As you saw, Robert Rosen said on Facebook the other day, uh, and God bless him, he told the truth. You know, he said that would take the dark money out of the election because it takes more to focus on the local community. Everybody has an opinion. You know, but you know, we at the end of the day, we have to do right for the best for our community. Adults like the county council in Charleston County, mm-hmm. they come together for the betterment of Charleston County. I don't think why well, can't the people from different parts of Charleston County come together on the school board and do the same thing? How much dark money is left in the last election? Man, they spent over seven hundred thousand dollars, and they voted. And they, remember, you saw the plaques; they voted for. Those four school board members that you see right now, that they all are together causing the havoc, along with the ones who they kind of married into the to the marriage that were um, already on the board. So they, they control about seven votes on the school board, and that seven vote continuously does the same thing in, in and out. And let me continue with the Post and Courier article because it reads this, but we also don't believe that legislators have taken the time to think through the likely effects of this legislation. So what would the effects be in North Charleston if this legislation is passed in your mind? Well, again, I won't even get into the discussion the Post and Corey. I find that in, they're not credible. Let's just move on. Um, i tell you, um, I have to take my hat off to Leon Stavonakis, Representative Stavonakis. That guy, did what other African American leaders would not have done. That guy had endured a lot of suffering, uh, attacks on his personal family, attacks on his personal family, um, uh, just just tearing him apart. And he stood the course. Now next week it goes into the Senate, right. and I hope the Senate at least works along with him. You have never seen a bipartisan effort, never, now come on, in the House of Republicans and Democrats pulling together on the issue of education. Poster Corey won't do a story on that. So tell me all those folks are wrong and they all see it that way. When have you seen the Charleston County delegation, Republicans and Democrats, pull together one single gender item? Never. This is a historical moment. I gotta go back to the post for you. Uh, I don't want to talk about the people. <laughs> I don't want to go back to you talk me about anything else in China. The, the, price, the price of North Charles and the gas. Okay, they are not credible people. Okay, they just do one side of stories. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me get over to what they're talking. Well, obviously, mission critical actions. That's another big topic here in the Charles County School District, and obviously, you know, prior receding for magnet and charter schools. What are your ob- objections, that is, to mission-critical actions in Charleston County? Well, again, that mission-critical statement, the Clemson study, right. the general from Clemson study was a personal friend of Dr. Postlewitz. Okay. They, he's another Horry County guy and his friend of hers. When you pay for what you want, you yield the result that you need. And it was all used in smoke and mirror to get us to where we're at today. Again, all this, I got a call from some parents um, 
from Buse Academy the other day. And the issue with Buse Academy, this is what this all involves from again, going back to Todd Garrett. You have a group of parents downtown that want to kick out the parents of Buse that are Mount Pleasant and North Charleston. They want to take over Buse and watch the word and go back to the word of what Todd Garrett did and they voted on for Buse Academy. They want to make the people that qualify for, qualify for abuse within the district of downtown. The district of downtown is 70% black, I mean 70% white. Okay. And then the African American kids are at a disadvantage down there. So therefore, like they opened up the kindergarten the other day, you had zero African Americans applied for abuse. So they did the same thing with Mitchell Elementary that changed the, the, uh, the, the magnet school status that's going to hurt African Americans. This is all a lab, an elaborate plot to move African Americans out of the schools downtown. Now, again, you have 70% white, 30% African American. Now, you have white folks are pointing this out, and they think it's unfair. So, again, like, we can't, you know, and they're fussing now because Leon used the county council district line. And they overlap into the city of Charleston, but the city of Charleston is not big enough for its own district. So when they redo the district lines, they may have to draw with West Ashley or something like that, or how the population may go. But the city of Charleston does not have enough land mass to have its own district. Not not like that. So again, they're all trying to get control to get control to deal with African Americans that are in the plotted areas of the city of Charleston. What is the Charleston County School District's problem with African Americans? Well, I think, one, you know, they want to close schools down and move them around. They want to erase the bed code. So it seems like they did make some, you know, some academical changes and improve in education. Um, they have not put forth the resources and effort and build up the morale of the staff to, to deal with education as a whole. We have to deal with the issue of the underserved in Charleston County. We have to put forth an economic, an, an economic and an educational plan that we can gauge every three to four years and do benchmarks in between to make sure we're reaching the goals of our students. And it's not all about the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. You're dealing with people who are living, breathing people. And the disparity and the issues that they deal with in their community are unlike anything else um, in my Pleasant. Now, again, Mount Pleasant individuals over there have their own problems. They have uh, kids that are vaping. They have kids that are taking opioids. They have kids that are smoking marijuana. And so in North Charleston, our kids may smoke marijuana, but you know that's about the only thing they make them smoke. But their disparity has gotten them so bad that they, that they don't have the financial means. So the people in Mount Pleasant may need more resources of mental, mental health counseling and, and things of that nature to help them with crises in their area. Where is the uh, money set aside for those problems and the issues that you just mentioned? Well, we had, that's the thing about it. We're not, we're not even touching that yet. In West Ashley, West Ashley High has a number one discipline record, too, in Charleston County, West Ashley High. So they're not in opioids, uh, vaping, and, and they might be doing marijuana over there. But they're not necessarily doing the other two, but they're having more uh, gang activities in that school. That school may need more counseling, more uh, leadership, you know, initiatives in that school, uh, more maybe after school uh, uh, programs in their communities to, to bring about uh, some sort of economical change. All the pockets are not the same in Charleston County. Everything has, every, every area has a different need within their community. You talked earlier about, obviously, the alleged problem with African Americans in the, within the Charleston County School District, and you talk about those codes. How many codes are we talking? Man, she's trying to erase, what, four schools in North Charleston and put them all in one. She's trying to erase Mary Four and erase them and put them, you know, and do away with that. That's one there. Um, they're going to re try to revamp Prestige, um, not Prestige, Progressive, downtown in Charleston. Um, Meminger, all those change. Anytime you do the kind of changes like that, you change the bed code and it, and it erases everything and it starts over. How long will that take to start over? Immediately once you make the change. And for the state, it just erases the number. And then for her, on her way out the door, it looks like she's doing something great. Now, how many numbers 
are we talking all together? How many numbers? Yes, sir. Well, that's just left to be seen. Again, we have to look at, you know, where she started and where she's exiting and she, what she's going to try to hang her hat on. What is she hanging her hat on, do you think, right now? That she's going to say that she made some changes in Charleston County that were for the betterment of all children. So we just have to wait and see what she says. Uh, as a disclaimer, I asked <laughs> to interview Kate Darby. Haven't heard back from her. Mm -hmm. City Bond Coats gave me a newspaper reporter's type comment. Uh, the other board members are agreeing to do an interviews with me, so I hope to hear from them as well soon. And uh, thank you for your time as always. Well, thank you. And I got one little granddaughter here today. Okay. Hey, hey Parker. <laughs> you want to come in here with granddaddy and say hi? <laughs> this is my only one granddaughter, well, man. And she's, uh, she's making her improv too. This, this, is, this is what we'd be fighting for <laughs> and making sure not just her. For the all kids, but I'm babysitting today. Yeah. Her mother that education seminar to okay. six, but this is my only one and my pride and joy. Oh. So that's amazing. Say hi to Mr. Quentin. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And she's yeah. an honor student. Look, look, girl doing good on track. Well, congratulations. <laughs> and you, you talk about obviously the future of the kids. What communities are you worried about if this legislation legislation that is were to pass? Um, I'm worried about North Charleston. I'm worried about Hollywood. I'm worried about um, McClendonville. I'm actually worried about Mount Pleasant because they have a different type of problem over there. We need to address everything the way the way we need to, you know, to, to fit fit the needs. Worried about Burke High School. Burke is not a failing school, but because it's in the area of development, they're trying to push those African Americans out. So therefore, we we have our, our plate full. There's a lot of things I can tell you about that would take up too much time in your video that we need to focus for when we're dealing with the plight of um, despair, African Americans, Latinos, and poor whites. Where are we with development and when it comes to Burke High School? Well, again, um, I think Mrs. Swinton, the principal there, and the, and, the, and the folks have the right idea, the right temperament. I think we need to let them work. We need to let them have their own marketing dollars to attract other um, people to want to come to Burke. African Americans are have to do what I made the mistake of when I was younger, and we need to build up our own. You know, Burke, uh, the North Charleston area, uh, that apply to areas, we need to make sure we take care of the root that's actually holding everything up. And that's what Mississippi is doing right now. They're taking care of the root. root. What are those ideals that Burke High School are, really are using right now in your mind? Well, I understand they have some, some great STEM programs. They have some, uh, they have a good, um, I understand, culinary arts program there. Sure. Um, they have some things that they're working on and turning the corner, but we need to give them the support that they need to build that up. What support are you looking at right now? Well, again, I have to sit down with the principal right now. You know, they can't talk to us because if they seem like they're talking to me, they get blackballed. So we got to kind of wait until... They talk to me in cold in the booth in the corner in the back in the dark and tell me what's going on. And so I have to wait until they feel like they are free to come out and speak on their own and they'll be able to tell you what they need. Now, those marketing dollars, how many marketing dollars have been allocated to Burr? Um, none so far. The district does it as a, as, a, as a big entity. But we need to let the school market itself. Is that anywhere in the budget for marketing dollars for Burr by chance? Don't know, Quentin. That's something we have to explore. What else would you explore in that budget? Um, right now, I mean, we're just going to talk when the budget budget time comes. I just got to see what she, she's running her agenda right now. Her agenda is closing black schools down. So we just got to see what, what comes out at budget time. And then we're going to have to wait to see what happens in November. And if the board does change, then we have to go back and undo some things. Just have to wait and see. Now, I would love to have Dr. Fultz to wait on Quintus Fultz up to get her side of the story and get Todd Garrett's side of the story as well and all the other board members. So they're always welcome on Quintus Fultz up. So just want to put that out there as well. And well, I'd love to do one with you and with me and Todd together so I can chew his tail up. I'm not getting involved with that. <laughs> I would love that. I'm a nice boy in the meetings, but I would love to do an interview with him face to face. <laughs> oh, God. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I know you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you see those African Americans, so, and I won't pick the names, 
that are sitting there rah 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 and 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 don't even know what they're talking about. You don't hear them talk about Todd Garrett, Kate Darby, Joyce Green, uh, Priscilla Jeffries, all those that voted for that change. Uh, Chris Fraser, all those that voted for those dramatic changes that went down went down in African American schools. You don't hear them joke and say nothing. You want to know why? They stepped in the fetch on the plantation. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm hoping to get Todd Garrett on Quentin's post up soon so he can get his side of the story as well. But again, thank you. Let for me know when you do it. I'll walk in on y'all. <laughs> he said, nah. Yeah, he was, he talking about nah. I'm a nah for her. Hey, listen to your granddaughter. Hey, I'm a nah. <laughs> thank you for your time. I really do. Hey, yeah, my heart is mouth for babe. Nah. <laughs> and welcome back to Quentin's Full Talks. Like, hey, Quentin, too, one more thing. Yes, sir. Uh, this is African American History, Black History Month. Sure. We need, I'm, I'm working on the African, African American piece, paying tribute to African Americans <gasps> in Charleston County in the Civil Rights era and, 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 and moving forward. And then, you know, you'll see it when it comes out soon. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.